walked into this building this morning. We know that you inhabit the praises of your people, Lord, so we send our praises up to you right now. In the mighty, precious name of Jesus, and all of God's people say, amen, amen. Come on, let's worship.
We have a direct connection to him this morning. This is your opportunity right now if you need something from him to call upon his name. He's there to answer. He will answer. Would you say that he will answer? He won't deny his children from going to the throne. He's there this morning.
is something that irritates me. I mean, there are several things that irritate me, but here's just one of those things that irritate me. Does it irritate you when you go to a stoplight and the car in front of you and the light turns green and they just sit there? Come on, let's just get this out in the open right now in the name of Jesus. And so, you know, you want to help people. So you have a little bit of patience and you wait. And then you want to just help them. It may be a, a slight tap, just a slight tap on the horn. Then, then you know, maybe they're going to look in the rearview mirror. So it's, it's a few hand gestures, proper hand gestures. And if that don't work, it's just slowly edging towards their bumper. Not touching their bumper, but just getting, just come on. Maybe they need a little bit of a push. Does anybody ever have that feeling? Does that, that, you're just being helpful, I know. You're just, you're helping those individuals. But there's just something that says, come on! It's green! Go! But yet they, they just sit there. Well, I'm not just talking about people that just sit there at a stoplight. But there's a lot of people in life that are stopped at lights that have turned green and they need to move forward. But what I'm talking about is people that are held hostage by what was and will not move on to what will be. It's someone who has no discernment when God has changed the signal of their life. Well, come on, I'm going to help somebody today. So I want to go quickly to a story in the Bible of a guy who had that problem. His name was Samuel. So let's then go to 1 Samuel chapter number 15 and 16. Now, to give you the, 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 the backup, because you've got to have the background so you won't miss the breakdown. So Saul is the first king of Israel. Samuel is the prophet of Israel at that time that God used then to show who the next king would be. God selected the king, and Samuel then was the prophet that was used to select the first king. Israel said, we got to have a king. We want a king. Everybody else got a king. we got to have a king. God said, no, you don't. He says, yes, we do. And sometimes God gives us stuff that, well, just to show us that he was right and, he, and we were wrong. Anybody ever been there? And so sure enough, when Saul becomes king, he didn't measure up to what they needed to the point that he was even somewhat rebellious towards God to the point that God rejected Saul as king. He didn't obey God. He didn't do what he was supposed to have done. And so God rejected him them as king. So, so Samuel's the one who appointed him. Samuel's the one that anointed him. Samuel's the one that invested in him. You can imagine how much time and effort that Samuel spent with Saul to say, all right, we got to do this right, we get it right. And Saul didn't do it right. And, Saul re and God rejected Saul from being king. And he told Samuel, Samuel, this guy has blown it, so he's not going to be the king. And he rejected him as that. What was Samuel's reaction to that? Well, it's like a lot of our reaction to that because of the amount of time and effort that Samuel, no doubt, had spent and invested there in Saul. And it tells us at the end of chapter 15, verse number 35, 1 Samuel 15, 35, until the day Samuel died, he did not go see Saul again. Though Samuel mourned for him, and the Lord regretted that he had made Saul king over Israel. I mean, this so impacted Saul and the relate or Samuel and the relationship that he had with Saul that he just cut off all communication. I'm not going to see you anymore. I'm not going to talk to you anymore. And he sat there, and his Bible says that he mourned him. This word mourn is a, is a powerful word. It really talks about like at a death of an individual that you mourn them. Saul hadn't died. But yet in the relationship there with Saul and Samuel, he, he, he mourned him. He got to the point that he just stopped everything. Now, Israel hadn't stopped. God hadn't stopped blessing Israel. God's plan had not stopped. But Samuel had stopped because of the circumstance and the situation and the relationship that he had with Saul. 
Samuel was at a green light, but he hadn't moved forward. And I want to talk to you today about the reality that I think many times that can happen to us. That we get to that point because of the circumstances, the situation in our lives, that we've stopped when God is saying, no, you need to go. So today, I'm going to honk my horn a little bit. I'm going to give you some hand motions, and I'm going to pull up right behind you a little bit. And I may even bump your bumper today. But my point is, I want you to move on because the light has turned, and God's got something more for you. Can I get an amen? So now let's go to chapter 16, because this really is where our story is at in that context. It says in verse number one, the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul? Everybody say, how long? In other words, how long are you going to sit there? Just like you when that car is said, are you going to go? How long are you going to sit here? And it just seems like that time gets longer and longer. This was the question that God asked to Samuel, how long are you going to sit here? How long are you going to mourn over him? God had a king ready for Israel. We already know the story because we've read it many times that David was going to be the next king. And God already had a way and a plan to anoint David to be the next king, which would be the greatest king that Israel has ever known. So the plan of God had not stopped. It's just Samuel that had stopped. The promise cannot become a reality as long as you are sitting in your past circumstances. God's not through with what he wants to do in your life. No matter how bad somebody messed up, no matter how bad you may feel about it, God's plan is still working. And what God has for you cannot begin as long as you are sitting there crying over what is no more. I'm helping somebody today. It says that Samuel mourned Saul. He was disappointed in Saul. Saul, I can't believe you did that. You should know better. All the time I've spent, all the, all the time we've had together, and, and we've invested, and I told you not to do that, and you went ahead and did it in any way. He was disappointed in Saul. He was no doubt hurt by Saul. He felt betrayed by Saul. He, even to the point of depression, he's sitting there, and God asked him the question, how long are you going to sit here? How long are you going to mourn all this? How long are you going to stay in the circumstances of the past instead of moving to the promise of the future? And can I tell you news today for you, my friend? No matter what the situation may have been, God is not through, and God is still moving forward. The question is, how long are you going to sit there? Turn to somebody and say, the lights turn green. Move on. Look what it says next. It says, the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn since I have rejected him as king over Israel? He says, I've rejected Saul. See, one of the reasons that people stop and don't move forward at a green light is simply because they're not paying attention. They're on their phone. They're looking down at the just like some of y'all out there, you're on your phone right now, so you're paying attention to me. So come on, look up here. <laughs> Devil gets you distracted, looking, so you're looking at your phone, you're talking to somebody over there, you're not, and so you're not aware that the signal has changed. You're not aware that it has turned green. And I think many of us, we, we are staying where we're at because we're not, a, we're not paying attention that God is doing something new. That the things are not the same, and so that's why we've got to stop living in the past. We've got to stop living in the what could have, should have, would have, that that's all gone by. It's time we get over what's happened. It's time we recognize that God is moving and doing something different. The light has changed. There are things in our life, yes, that God rejected things in our life that needed to change, but let's get those things changed, and let's move on to what God has for us. Quit trying to go back to the past. Because here's what will happen. You sit there long enough, and that light will turn red again. And some of y'all are missing your opportunities of what God is wanting to do new in your life because, again, you're not moving forward. Then, then God gives Samuel some specifics. He says, again, don't sit here. How long? I've rejected him, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to fill your horn with oil. Now, the reason you fill something is because it is what? This is real hard stuff, folks. It really is. You fill it because it's empty. So apparently, 
his oil, his horn was empty of oil. Why? Because he had poured it out on Saul. If you're not careful, other people will drain your oil. You allow the circumstances and the situations, the problem, the disappointments, the whatever it may be, that will drain the oil out of you. Don't let your past drain your anointing for the future. That's why it says in Ephesians chapter 5, it says, don't be drunk with wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be full of the Spirit of God. We need to be full of the Holy Spirit. Oh, I wish I was in a Pentecostal church and could preach this. Let me say it one more time. I said, we need to be full of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, now maybe you got it right there. And that word fill there is not just a one-time filling. It talks about a consistent, continual filling. We need to get full every day. Because let me tell you, people are going to drain you every day. I'll say it one more time. People are going to drain you every day. I just feel so drained. Then get full of the Holy Ghost. Fill yourself again. And, 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 and the Lord said there to Samuel, you need to fill your horn up. You need to get full of the Holy Spirit. Because God wants to, you to be full of the Holy Spirit. Because what's going to happen in your life, it's not going to come through the natural, but through the supernatural. See, many people do things naturally through their emotions and their powers and their talents because they're not full of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for that one amen. That was good back there. <laughs> because, again, we've leaned to our own understanding. We've leaned to our ways and our abilities, and we're not operating out of the Spirit of God. The most powerful part of you is your spirit. And that's where God wants to fill your spirit with the Holy Spirit. So it's not by might nor by power, but it's by God's spirit. Again, I'll, I'll preach this in a Pentecostal church and I'll get better response to that. Let me say it one more time. It's not by might nor by power, but it's by God's spirit. If we live by the flesh, we'll reap. If we sow the flesh, we'll reap to the flesh. I want things to be coming out of the Spirit of God that is in me. I've tried to do it by my own strength, and it doesn't work. God is about to do something supernatural through you. What God has in the next chapter is not going to be because of your ability or your talent or your good looks or how much money you got. What God is wanting to do through you in the next chapter is going to be through the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit that God will stretch forth His hands with signs and wonders. Get full of of the Holy Spirit. Because what God's about to do in you is not for you. He didn't want him to fill his horn up for Samuel to be anointed. He said, fill your horn up because I got somebody I want you to pour that oil out on. And you've got to understand this, folks. What God is wanting to do in you is what he's wanting to do through you to bless other people. Oh, I just, I feel this so much in my spirit that so many times we, we fill ourselves with the oil of God. We get blessed and then we put a cork on it. Take the cork off. Get your horn full of oil, but then find somebody that you can anoint. Find somebody you can minister to. Find somebody that you can reach out to. Get your horn full of oil, not so that you can jump and shout and run about, but that you can be filled with the power of God to reach out and to say to a layman on the side of the road, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. That's not going to happen till you fill your horn. See, I like those people who come to the stoplight. You can, just, you can see the car edging forward a little bit. It just, it's like they're watching when that yellow light over there turns. Get ready. I, it's, I mean, they're, they're, they're like they're at the speed track. They're, they're at the drag race. They're just waiting for that. Oh, they're just ready to go. How many of you out there are just like that? Jesus, help you. I want a church that's anticipating. I want a church that's ready. I want a church that's got their foot on the pedal. Oh, my, 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 we're ready to go. Just come on, God, give us the signal. Just turn that light. We ain't going to sit here. We're ready to head on down that road. 
Made me want to get in my Mustang right now. I'm ready to go. He says, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. Put it in gear. Don't just rev up your engines and make a lot of noise. It's, okay, so confession time here. So, now when we were younger, when we were younger, that's where you had a birthday, who understand this, we couldn't afford glass packs. So we just unhooked the muffler off of our cars because <laughs> we wanted that sound. Now, I'll have to admit, I've changed the mufflers out on the Mustang. It's got a little bit. So he said, you're going to do what? I said, well, I don't, I don't want the loud stuff, but I just want to hear it just a little bit. I just, just when I, I just want to hear it just a little bit. But friends, the problem is, is we've just been concerned about what we hear instead of about moving down the road. We come to church and rev up our engine. But we never put it in gear. Oh, we'll have a great rally. Well, oh yes, praise God. We're gonna do it. We're a lot of talk, but we're not a lot of do. He said, fill your horn with oil, and what I want you to do is I want you to be on your way. Don't just sit idle. Don't just stay here. And when that light turns green, I got somewhere that I'm wanting you to go. What are you waiting on? He says in verse 1, he continues, he says, because I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. Now, don't miss this. He says, I'm sending you. In other words, this plan is not your plan, it's my plan. We've gone off our own direction. We've gone on the way we want to go. And God says, no, I've got a direction for you to go. When the light turns green, this is the way you're going to go. I'm going to send you down to Jesse's house. I've got a direction for you to go. God's got a plan for your life, friends. I don't care what disappointments, I don't care what you've been through, what has happened in your life, that does not stop the plan of God. God is sending you, and when he sends you, that means you're not alone. The devil wants you to think that you're isolated. The devil wants you to think that you can't make it, that you're just off as a, as a free agent. You're not. You're part of the team. And God's got something. God's doing something. He says, I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be the king. In other words, God already has made a plan and is putting that plan together. You just can't see it yet. You don't know what's down the road. But God's already gone ahead of you and made a way. I'm going to say that one more time. I said, you don't know what's down the road. You don't know what's ahead of you. God does. And when God says, move on, quit sitting at the green light, be on your way, he says, because I'm going to be with you, and I've got a direction and a plan that I want you to be a part of fulfilling. I've chosen. God has a king. This did not catch God by surprise, what Saul did. And the problems and the situations that have happened in your life didn't catch God by surprise. God didn't say, didn't see that coming. No, he knew the plan, made the plan. When Abraham went up on the side of the mountain with Isaac, God was sending an angel up with a ram on the other side. God always goes before you, and God makes a plan. So even when you can't see it, know that God says, no, I've chosen one. I've made a way. The plan is you've just got to head that way. So now let's get back to the humans, which is Samuel. Because I think all of us would have to admit there are those times that we have set at the green light. We've sat there when we said, you know, maybe God wants me, to, and we've sat there for whatever reason. And here was the reaction of Samuel. So Samuel's reaction there in verse number two, but Samuel said, how can I go? How can I go? Saul hears about this. He's going to kill me. Now Saul's still the king. Saul's still in authority. Saul, Saul is still a powerful man. And now God is telling Samuel, no, I've got somebody else. Fill your horn with oil. Don't just sit here anymore. 
And no one else may be able to see this. So everybody else may still have their faith in Saul and all that's happened. But I'm telling you, I've got a plan. You're going to be a part of it. Fill your horn with oil. Get up and go because I've selected a son out of the house of Jesse. And you go down there. And immediately, instead of looking to the promise of what God said that he would do, Samuel goes back to what has happened. He's talking about Saul again. He said, Saul is going to kill me if I do that. How, how can I go? Samuel becomes overcome by fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of what other people are going to say. Fear of the reaction of people. He said, Saul is going to kill me. Now listen to me close. Don't let your past stop you from your future. Now, let me, let me put it this way. And I want you to listen to this. The greatest enemy of discernment is desire. One of the greatest enemies of discernment, discerning the will of God, discerning the voice of God, discerning the way that God would have it go. In other words, you want something so bad that you miss the direction that God has for you. Does that make sense? I want this, i got to have this. When God is saying, no, I've rejected that. No, that's not the direction we're going. That's not what we're doing. I want you to do this. But because we are so consumed with our desire and what we want in our ways that if we're not careful, we will miss. And then we start making excuses for why God's way is not going to work and why our way has got to work. And usually it's motivated by fear. I'm afraid if I do that, it's not going to work. It's going to fail and everything. Let me stay where I'm comfortable with what I know. But here's something you may not know about this story. Okay, here's the extra bonus points now for the, for the quiz. So where did God send Samuel? Where did he tell him to go? Jesse's house. Where was Jesse's house at? Bethlehem. Bethlehem is the home of David, Jesse's family, so they live there in Bethlehem. So he says, I want you to go down to Jesse's house there in Bethlehem, and there you'll find a king to anoint. He says, what about Saul? He'll kill me. He had forgot where he was sending him. Now, Bethlehem at that time was not within the territory that Saul was in control of. It was in another part of the kingdom that Saul's armies, Saul had not yet taken authority over. So here's, here's what I need you to recognize in that. At the time, Bethlehem didn't have the authority of Saul over it. So in other words, Saul had no authority there. The devil may have messed up your past. But the devil has no authority over your future. I'm going to say it again. The devil may have messed up your past. He, he may have had power there because you gave it to him and whatever. But that's your past. But the devil has no authority over your future. Don't let your past mistakes, your past problems, your past situations, don't let them hold you back from what God has for you in the future. Fill your horn with oil. Quit setting at the green light. Okay, now let me see if I can land this thing. Because you can't miss this next part because many people will stop right here and say, all right, then let's go. But there was a key to this that God says, all right, here's how you're going to step into this. Here's how you're going to move into this aspect of being able to anoint David as the next king. The Lord told him, he said, take a heifer with you. That's a cow. <laughs> he said, take a heifer with you. And, and when they ask you what's going on, you say, I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. I'm, I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. If you want to write something down, write this down. No sacrifice, no future revelation. No sacrifice, no future revelation. You're anointed, you got your horn full, you're on your way, you're ready there. But he says, here's the thing that's going to open the door to this. It's the sacrifice. It's that you're willing to go there and you're going to say, no, here's what we've come to do. Because the place of sacrifice is where God reveals your future. 
So instead of mourning the past, instead of having a pity party, instead of feeling sorry for yourself, instead of feeling offended because of what people have done to you, it's time to get over it and offer up the sacrifice of praise. Because it is the sacrifice of praise that opens the door into the presence of God. Oh man, I wish I could shout right now. I just, if I wasn't in this Presbyterian church right now, I would just shout right now. I said it is, the, it is the sacrifice of praise that opens up the doorway into the presence of God, which then opens up to the revelation of the future that God has for you. Some of y'all want to get all anointed and oily, but you never want to sacrifice anything. Now shout. He says, no, you take that down there. You take that heifer down. You take that cow down there and, and you offer up a sacrifice. He says in verse 3, he said, invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. The revelation didn't come till the sacrifice was made. He says, you are to anoint for me the one that I indicate. That indication did not happen. See, we, 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 we always bring in the part about lining up the boys and got the wrong one, the wrong one, where's David? And that's all a part of the story. But understand, after the sacrifice, after the sacrifice, he said, then I'm going to show you the one. Some of you want God to show you things. You're... you're you're so anointed, you're so oily, you're sliding out of your chairs every Sunday morning. You can jump and shout and run about better than anybody else. But you're not sacrificing. You're not giving of your time and of your talent and your treasure. You want somebody else to do that. And God says, no, it is the sacrifice that will bring the revelation of what I have for you today. It's when Samuel sacrificed that God showed him the next king. What is God waiting to reveal to you if you would just be obedient with the sacrifice? What is God wanting to show you about your life and the next phase to get you over where you were? Why is God saying, I, I want you to look at the green light. I want to show you what I'm about to do, but I, but I can't do that because you're not being obedient to me. Can I just circle 180 back? We started this with King Saul. And that God rejected Saul as king. And if you'll read why God rejected Saul as king, it's because he did not obey God. He didn't do concerning the sacrifice what God had told him that he needed to do. And that's where we get the scripture that says to obey is better than sacrifice. God's just wanting you to be obedient to him. God's turning the light green. God's ready for you to move on. What's holding you back? What's keeping you from going? Are you, are you living your past? Get over your past. You need to get full of, your, of the Spirit of God and say, God, I need, I, I need to fill my I've let other people drain me. I've let other people uh, control me. I've let other people's situation. I've let it drain the joy and the peace and the power of God out of my life. Fill your horn with oil. God's with you. You're not alone. He's got a plan for your life. Stop letting fear and what other people say stop you. Offer up the sacrifice and see if God will not give you the revelation that suddenly you're going to look up and say, my goodness, that light's green. I got to move on. Stop setting at the green light. I want you to bow your heads with me all over this place. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Because I really believe today, friends, God's ready to turn the light green. I really believe that God is ready to move you forward into the next thing that he has for you. I, I, I truly believe that many of you are sitting there at that light. 
God is saying, no, I want you to move forward. And you're allowing circumstances and situations to hold you back. Today's the day, my friend, that you look up and say, the light's green. I need to, I need to get over it. I need to get my horn full of oil. I need to move forward with what God has. So I'm going to pray right now. When I pray, I'm going to ask those of you that are here today that would simply say, Pastor, that's me. It starts with a relationship with God. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, that, that's where it begins. That's the ultimate sacrifice that we give ourselves as Jesus gave himself for you. But again, I think there are some that, just like Samuel, Samuel, a great prophet of old, but he found himself at that situation that he was sitting there mourning. And God says, no, I want you to move on. If that's you today, if this message is spoken to you, when I pray and say, man, if that's you, I'm just going to ask you to slip a hand up and say, Pastor, pray for me. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, no one looking around. Father, thank you for what's about to happen. Thank you, God, for lives that are about to be changed. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that we sense here today, that you are convicting and you are drawing people to you, Lord. You want people to move forward. The light's green. You just like you said to Samuel, how long are you going to mourn? And I think you're asking people, how long are you going to sit here at this situation? How long are you going to let this thing dominate you? I've got a work for you to do. You're going to have to sacrifice some things. You're going to have to give up your pride. You're going to have to give up your ways. You're going to have to be willing to do it. But I've got something ahead of you. So God, I thank you for men and women, young people, men and women of God that say, I've I've mourned long enough. I've sat here long enough. If that's you today, I want to embarrass you. I just want to pray for you. If that's you, and say, Pastor, pray for me right now. Just slip a hand up and say, this message was for me today. This message was for me today. Yes, yes. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Leave it up for just a moment. Leave it up for just a moment. I've got something for you. I've got something that I want to do. I've got something that I want to direct in your life. Anyone else? Okay, put your hands down now. And I want everyone to stand with me. Everyone standing across this place. Because one of the things that that God told Samuel, all right, fill your horn with oil, and then I want you to go. I want you to go. You can't stay where you're at. I want you to go. If you raised your hand today and you said, I can't sit here any longer. I can't stay in this situation any longer. I'm I'm ready to move for what God's got. The light's green. I see it now. Maybe you didn't raise your hand, but yet God's speaking to you. This is going to be a day that, that you're going to move off of stop and move into go. But it's going to be because you step forward and say, yes, that's what I want in my life. Don't just sit there and rev your engine. It's time to put it in gear. And so if you raise your hand today, you say, Pastor, this message was for me. I need that in my life. If that's you, I want you to step out from where you are and make your way to the front of this auditorium right now. God's ready to move you forward into what he has for you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Samuel was one of the greatest prophets of the Old Testament, but yet he found himself in a situation where he was just standing idle. And there's many times people have been hurt by people. People have had circumstances, situations. People have disappointed them like Saul disappointed them. And they're sitting there and God's saying, how long are you going to sit there? How long are you going to mourn? How long are you going to stay idle? Well, I've got so much for you to do. Come on, I think there's more of you. I think I don't care if this is your first time in church or you've been in part of Cornerstone longer than I have. It's time to say, wait a minute, I've let situations stop me. Come on, come on, come on. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Can I tell you what's ahead of you? Let me tell you what's ahead of you. Here's, here's, here's what was ahead of Samuel. Though Samuel was sitting there mourning 
thinking it was all over, nothing good could happen. The one I put my faith in saw, he's disappointed me, it's over. And what God was trying to show Samuel was no Samuel. The best is yet to come. This situation did not catch me by surprise. I knew what was going to happen. So I prepared something greater ahead of you. His name's going to be David. It's going to surprise everybody. But he's going to be the greatest king that Israel ever knew. And let me just tell you, for the situations and circumstances that have happened in your past, that's your past. God has greater things ahead of you in your future. That's what God is wanting to do in your life and through your life. You've got to, just got to stop mourning. You've just got to start believing that God has so much ahead of you. He's just waiting on you to get up. The lights turn green. It's time to go. And you're going to find things ahead of you. Things ahead of you if you will obey God. If you'll just simply do what he's told you to do, there'll be sacrifice. It won't be easy. But it will open the door to the revelation that God has for you in the future. Don't. You're either going to be a Samuel or you're going to be a Saul. Saul disobeyed. He didn't offer the sacrifice. And God says, I reject him. Samuel said, no, I'm not going to sit here. I'm going to do this. And through Samuel, the greatest king, was anointed. This ain't the end. This is the beginning. This is the beginning of what God is wanting to do. The devil would have you think it's the end. The devil would have you think it's over. Saul, he messed. No, no, no. That, I'm not tied to a man. I'm not tied to an individual. I'm tied to the calling of God in my life. The devil wants you to tie it to an individual. That's what the enemy wants you to because people will always disappoint you. People will always disappoint you. People will hurt you. Can I get an amen? amen? And too long we've tied ourselves to people and we've allowed them to be the ones that have influenced. That's what Samuel did. Don't feel bad. You're in good company. And we sit down and we mourn and God says, no, get up. The best is yet to come. Just, just follow me. Fill your horn with oil. Don't stay. Get to going. And I'll show you something great that I'm going to do in your life. Is this speaking to anybody today? Yeah. It's time. It's time. How long are you going to mourn? All of us have been this way. I've been this way. I found myself having pity parties for me. I found myself, I put my trust in this guy and I put my trust in her and it didn't work out the way and I thought it was gonna be this way. That was what Samuel was saying about Saul. And God just came by, eased up behind him, bumped his bumper a little bit and said, how long are you gonna sit here? How long are you gonna stay here? There's a work for you to do. There's a work for you to do. I want to flow through you to touch a nation. Okay. I just feel the Holy Spirit here in such a strong way. I want you just to bow your heads in just a quiet moment right now. Just in a quiet moment, as the Holy Spirit speaks to you, 
What's he telling you right now? What's he speaking to you about your circumstance, about the soul in your life? There's healing that's taking place right now in some people's hearts. Lord, we need you right now. You're an awesome God. You're a mighty God. We need you right now, Lord God. Speak to us. Speak to us, Lord God. Holy Spirit, speak to us. some of you that are still standing in the congregation and God is saying to you, how long? How long are you going to let that past hurt keep you back? How long are you going to let that past disappointment? There's still some more before I say a final prayer here. There's still some more of you that need to step out and make your way to the front. Why do I need to do that? What difference does that make? That's the sacrifice. That's the sacrifice. You need to sacrifice your pride. You need to get to that point that you're saying, God, I don't care what anybody, I don't care what anybody thinks or says, I've got to move on. No, shh. God's speaking to some people right now. God's speaking to some people right now. I'm about to pray. So if that's you, I'm not looking for you. I'm not, not going to applaud for you. We're praying right now. As a church, we're praying right now. What if Samuel had not answered the call? There would not have been a king. God is wanting to use your obedience to open the door for not just some people, for a lot of people. So I'm just giving you a moment to come join in with us down here to, to, to let the Lord know in a physical way. And I think let the devil know also, I ain't sitting here any longer. The lights turn green. I'm moving on. I'm, I'm following the calling of God. Now let me ask you this real quick. If you're coming, come on. Start your relationship with God. If you've never asked Jesus to be Lord of your life, that's where it begins. I don't want you to leave here today without having that opportunity to accept him as your Savior. Some of y'all, you're just at the stoplight of light because of the sin in your life, and that's all of us, until Jesus comes and you say, Pastor, I, I need a change. I need Jesus. My life's not right with God. I need Jesus in my life. I need, a, I need a big change in my life. I, I, I'm going to tell you, wherever you're at, we love you, we care about you because we've all been right there. And I've got somebody who wants to pray with you. So whether you're here at this altar or maybe you're, you're standing out there and you say, Pastor, I need to give my life to God. I, I need to make a fresh start. I need Jesus in my life. Our relationship with God is not what it should be. Maybe you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior. Maybe you've, you've walked away from him, but you know right now, I need Jesus. If that's you, I'm going to send one of our prayer team to come pray with you. Will you just slip your hand up and say, that's why I came down. I need to get things right with Jesus. I need just look at here. So prayer team, very quickly, keep your hand raised till somebody. If you're in the audience here, here's some right over here, right over here, right over here. Come on, prayer team, move, move with me quickly. Now I want to pray with the rest of you. Just keep your, keep your hands raised till somebody from the prayer team comes to you there. Then, then put your hand down. And that way, well, no, I need somebody right here for this couple right here. Right here. Right here. And there's a man right here. I want to be sure everybody.
anybody have somebody to pray with him? Yes. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to say one prayer, but I want you to look at me one more time. Samuel had to make up his mind what he was going to do. I'm going to pray for you. But the decision is going to be because of what you do. Samuel, you fill your horn. Samuel, you go on your way. Samuel, you get the sacrifice. I can't bring the next step, uh, what God has for you, into your life. Only you can do that. But if you will commit to that, this is the beginning of what God has for you. Let me pray for you right now. Father, I thank you for each one that has come forward. God, I thank you for the, the revelation that you've given them. They see the light is green now. They see that. They're tired of setting idle. They're ready to move forward. Fill their horn with oil, Lord God. Fill their horn with oil. Fill them and empower them by the power of the Holy Spirit. Give them the courage and the strength to say, I'm going to step forward. I'm not staying here any longer. I'm not living in my past. I'm moving to my future. God, I thank you for what's going to come out of this, that the best is yet to come, that you are going to do great and mighty things through those who stand here. There's going to be Samuels that are going to arise. There's going to be Davids that are going to arise. There's giant killers among us. By the power of your spirit, Lord, I rebuke the lies of the devil in the name of Jesus. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And we declare that power today. That greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And we declare the victory of God over every situation. Use us, Lord God. Show us that area that we need to sacrifice. Show us where we have fallen short. That today, Lord God, we may fulfill that. Bless these that are here today. In the name of Jesus. Can we sing Mighty God? Is that what y'all want to sing? Whatever you want to sing, we'll just sing this one verse. Come on, sing it all over this place one time. If you got the words, put them up there. going to set up the green light any longer, God. We're going to move forward into what you have for us. Thank you for the revelation today through the power of your word in that name that is above every name, in the name of Jesus. These altars are open. If you want to spend time in prayer, feel free to do that. Otherwise, you can consider yourself dismissed in the love and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. See you at baptisms tonight at 6 o'clock.